Hello, it's Sean. Today I'm going to be playing a game of Conflict of Heroes, Awakening the Bear, the second edition. I'm going to be using the solo expansion and we're going to be playing scenario number two, uh, Tank Hunt. All right, so first we need to place out these three Soviet tanks onto the board. They're going to get set up on row 12. This is row here. We're going to roll two dice and count that many spaces over. First one's going to go on number eight. One, two, three, four, six, seven. And they are set so they face the center of the board, depending on where they get placed. Next one is going to get put on seven. And the last one. Uh, you won't place them on the same place, so I'll reroll that. Four. All right, now I can place my units on the board. I start with this wagon here, um, but I have three pioneer units, a mortar unit, and a tank hunter unit. So I need to place these on the board, but they get to be placed uh, hidden. So first, I'm going to place this mortar unit. I'm going to put the rumored enemy token to remind myself that they're hidden, and I'll take it off if they become unhidden. Hunter unit. And let's see. Pioneer. that space is going to be exposed if I put measure center to center yeah that space is visible based on where these are set up right now so that one would be visible mm. so they're going to get set back a little bit here And this last primary unit is going to set up in the building. So I've got my unit set up. I get to start the game. <coughs> I get to start the game with a grenade and a bog down, and then each turn I will draw a new card. Um, and here we go I guess what we're doing here the scenario uh, the Russian forces are coming in with tanks uh, the German forces are trying to get some uh, supply wagons out so they have to travel along this road and exit the board over here uh, the Soviet player scores points for eliminating the wagons that's it the German player scores points for eliminating Soviet Union units and for getting the wagons off of the board. Um, so that's the base of the game. It starts with the Russian player having a one point advantage. Uh, we have six caps for the German player. And we'll see how, how it goes. Uh, I've found this mission to be very, very challenging. Um, but it's a good mission. I've, I've enjoyed playing it, even though I've never won it or even come close to winning it. But that's okay. So, uh, I think our first, first action here is going to be our mortar. It's going to fire smoke here. So he has 
two spaces to place a spotting unit and then he has direct line uh, there so he is going to fire smoke and we'll place it there and that cost four uh, action points because it's indirect fire so we'll see if he is spent and he is and now it is the Soviet activation uh, so we start with the priority orders there are no close combat there is no close range uh, fresh AI fresh AI is less than fresh units which that's true fresh AI has three units the and we have six units so it looks like they're gonna pass which is kind of odd but that's okay <clears throat> um, next this pioneer unit is going to fire smoke right there oh. Yeah. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want these guys to move over here and get visibility and then be able to see my hidden units right away. So we're going to lay that smoke. That cost two action points to do it. And that is a six, so it does not flip the unit. Next is the Soviets' turn again. Again, no close combat, no short range combat, so execute a counteraction. Uh, if the counteraction for this mission is if all German units on the map are hidden. Uh, this wagon is not hidden and that counts as one of those. So that, that won't happen. The AI closest to a target is going to low risk move toward. Now the way I understand that all of these hidden units don't count as targets right now because they're hidden. So. This wagon, though, is uh, uh, a target because it is not hidden. Even though they can't see it, it's still not hidden. So we're going to count range here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's the same distance for each of them. We'll see which one is going to move. I'm gonna roll a die. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four. So he is going to move. And he's gonna low risk move towards. So he doesn't want to get into any fire zones. And he's in the open right now. So he'll prefer um, some sort of space with cover. Uh, but he also wants to get closer. So I think he's pretty much just going to be straight forward here. So he's going to one, two, three. He's going to turn to face. He's not in any fire zones that he wasn't in. He's not in a lower uh, defensive modifier zone. So yeah, I think that is going to be his activation. So that was one uh, action point for that. So we'll see if he is spent. He is not. Now it is back to me um, this tank hunter unit is going to move here we're gonna try to drop a mine is what we're gonna do next turn the move there cost one action point so we're gonna see if uh, he's spent he is not we're gonna go back to the Soviets turn uh, no short range or no, no close combat no short range so if the fresh AI is less than the fresh units, the AI passes. Got this same thing. So we are. So they will pass. Hmm. Um, this tank hunter unit is going to lay a mine. All right, so he's gonna drop that mine right there. 
and that cost four action points. So we're gonna see if he is spent, and he is spent. So this mine is hidden. And this unit is also hidden, not smoke. All right. So next we'll activate the Soviets. If the AI plus units is less than four, it is not. So we don't move the time tracker. There is no short, uh, close combat. There is no short range. Execute counteractions. So that is if all German units on the map are hidden. Again, they're not because this wagon is not hidden. So we will skip that. Uh, the next is the unhit AI closest to a fresh unit that just acted. So this is the unit that just acted. However, the order is fire. He cannot fire it because he doesn't have a line of sight. So he won't do that. The hit AI closest. We don't have any hit AI, so that's not gonna happen. The AI closest to a target is going to make a low risk move toward. So that would be this unit. This is the only target available at this point because it can't see the hidden units. Um, so I think he's gonna move into this smoke. That does move him into a fire zone, but he didn't know that when he made the move. think that that is going to be his move. All right, so I believe that this uh, tank hunter unit is going to become unhidden. It's not in a cover hex. This unit, uh, I can see it. Uh, it's within two hexes. If he was... Uh, uh, within two hexes of their hex and has clear line of sight. The smoke actually reduces their line of sight. I don't know, it doesn't reduce their line of sight. It affects their DRM. So yeah, I think he becomes visible. So he's no longer hidden, which is gonna be real bad for him, potentially. But that is his activation. Uh, we're gonna see if he is spent. And the smoke, I don't believe, affects the... Uh... the cost to move. Nope. So it's one uh, AP to make that move, and he is not spent. Um, I don't like being exposed like that, so I am going to move here. And I'm going to use some AP to do that. So to move into a stone building. It adds one AP, so it's two APs to make that move. And I don't have to check for the spent. Hmm. All right. The Russians. If the AI plus units is less than six, less than or equal to, it is not. Um, so we don't have any close combat. We do have uh, short range though. So this tank has short range on that unit. Um, 
So right now their defense value is 13 plus two for being in that building. So it goes to a 15. <clears throat> the tank has an attack against infantry of five. So it would need a 10 to hit. So he is going to fire on my unit. He needs a 10. Oh no wait, he's also within uh, close range, so he gets plus three, so he needs a seven to hit my unit. And he got it with a 10. So his total is 15, 18 against my unit's 15, so he beat me by three, which isn't enough to kill me outright, thankfully. So I'm gonna draw a damage marker for my unit. And he is unnerved, which could be worse. Uh, we're gonna see if he is spent. That cost five AP for that tank unit. And he is spent. Now it's back to me. I think that I'm going to uh, these tanks are just so hard to uh, to do anything to. I'm going to have this unit back up here. So that's going to be one, two for moving into the building, and three for moving backwards. So that costs three action points. I use cap because he's already spent, but I don't want him to get killed right just yet. <clears throat> so back to the Russians. If AI plus units is six or less, then we'll move the time tracker. It is not six or less, so we will skip that. There is no close combat. There is no uh, short range combat. So the highest firepower AI farthest from the lowest defense value unit closest to an AI. The highest firepower AI farthest from the lowest defense value. So let's see. I don't think he has a line of sight here. But let's look. And no, he does have line of sight. So this is the only tank that has line of sight uh, that can carry out this order. So he's going to be the one to activate. He may not carry it out though because uh, he might need. Oh, what am I doing? What's this unit? We'll see what he needs to hit. So he is within range. He has a plus five. This unit's defensive value is 13 plus two for the building. So that gives him a 15. So that tank unit is going to need a 10, uh, but he this is firing with plus one caps. So he'll need a nine to hit the unit. So we're gonna carry out that fire here. And he misses, thankfully. So we're gonna see if he's spent, it costs five action points. And if he spent three or, or more, he is, so he is spent as well. All right, next up for the Germans. I'm going to pop smoke with this Panzer or Pioneer unit. They're going to fire smoke here. And that is two action points. And they're fine. See what the Soviet player does. 
if AI plus units is less than 24, then we're going to move the time tracker. It is less than 24. So we're going to move the time tracker. And on that mission track, it says move all wagons along the road. So I only have one wagon on the road currently. So it's going to go one, two, and stop there. Um, next, we don't have any close combat. We don't have any short range combat. The execute counteractions, we ha have units that are not hidden on the board, so we won't do that. Um, next up, we have the highest firepower hit AI, uh, which we don't have any hit AI, so we'll skip that. And then we have the highest firepower AI closest to a hit unit. That would be, this is the only hit unit. This is the only unit could, that could activate because he's the only unspent unit. And they don't have line of sight, so he's not going to fire. And then the highest firepower AI closest to a unit. Same thing, this is the only AI that can act. He does not have line of sight to any unit, so he will not fire. So last possible is the execute mission orders. And that is the T-34 furthest from the wagon will move toward the wagon. So. This is the unit that's going to activate one, two, three with his bonus movement would put him one, two, three, four away. He could also come this way. One, two, three. That'll put him further away. So he is going to make his move and bonus moves right there. And that is one action point. So we'll see if he is spent and he is not. So, next up are my Germans again. This unit is going to step forward. That is one action point. He is not going to do that because that will make him visible. He's going to fire smoke right there. And that is two action points. He is okay, not spent. And then we will see what the Soviet player does. If the AI plus units is less than 10, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we will move the mission track again. So we're going to place this wagon on the field. And then move all wagons along the road. So he is going to move there. This wagon just moved into a minefield. Uh, that may not have been the best place to put those mines, but that's okay. So the mines are uh, detonated on a roll of eight or more. So we're going to roll here to see. And thankfully they did not detonate. Um... All right, so there is now some short range fire. So we don't have any close combat. We do have short range. Oh, but he is spent, so he will not uh, carry that out. We have if the fresh AI is less than the fresh units. So we have one fresh AI and one, two, three fresh units. So the AI is going to pass. And the German player, let's see, this Pioneer Company is now going to step forward. And he's in that smoke, so I don't think he'll be visible this time. So he's going to make that move, and that is his action. So we will see if he is spent and he is not because it only cost one AP and back to the Soviet player if the AI plus units is four or less it's not we have more than that um, so we don't have any close combat we don't have any unspent units that are in short range combat execute counteraction uh, there are non hidden units on the map so we don't have to do anything with that so the hit AI closest to a unit, we don't have any hit AI. 
the unhit AI closest to a fresh unit that just acted. This is the unit that just acted. That is the unit that can activate because it is the only unspent uh, unit on the enemy side. And they uh, do not have line of sight because the smoke underneath here blocks line of sight. And I think maybe the buildings be in the way too, but the smoke blocks it for sure. So we're not going to fire that. And the AI closest to a hit unit. Um, this is the hit unit, but again, no line of sight because the building between blocks. So we're going to go to the execute mission orders. And this is the T-34 farthest from the wagon. We'll move towards the wagon. Um, so this is the one that has to to activate it is going to move directly forward no because they won't stack um normally he would move there but there's a tank unit already there and the AI units won't stack so I think the AI is going to pass again I might have got that wrong the AI passes back to the Germans this pioneer unit is going to fire smoke onto that space hopefully protect that wagon a little bit um, and that costs two AP to do it that is the wrong deck and he is spent that's a bummer but we did protect that a little bit so hopefully that will work out for us um, let's see back to the Soviet player all right so this is a blue command card so any of the uh, AI units are eligible for this so we don't have any close combat however we do have some short-range combat so this uh, T-34 is going to fire on this wagon and probably do pretty well with this Let me look up the smoke because I think the modifier for the unit or for the hex that you're in and the target hex for smoke affect it. All right, so it looks like the smoke is going to affect for both the hexes from the targeted unit and the target unit uh, or target hex. So there's going to be a plus four modifier uh, for that shooting, but I still think this is going to be able to happen. So the tank unit is shooting at a vehicle, so it has plus seven because it's a wheeled vehicle. No, it still uses the um, the soft target. It is a vehicle, but it's uh, not going to use the hard the armored value. So it's going to use plus five. Um, it's within short range, so it's going to have a plus three. So we're at plus eight. And then there is a minus four modifier to the roll because of the smoke that is there. Well, it adds to the defense value. Um, so he has a plus eight for his attack. The defense value of this is a 16. So looks like we need an eight or better on the dice for the tank to hit the wagon. And he missed. Lucky, lucky me. He is already spent, so we don't have to check that. And it's back to the German player's turn. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And I think we are going to lay smoke here. Just because. I feel like that's a necessary thing. So that's two AP. He is not spent. Back to the Russian player. Uh, there is no close combat. There is no short range combat. 
uh, for an unspent unit. The hit AI closest, there is no hit AI, so we'll skip that. The AI closest to the lowest defense value fresh unit is going to fire. Uh, this unit has no f ability to fire at any units right now because he doesn't have a line of sight to anything. So we're going to skip that. The AI closest to a unit closest to a mission objective is going to move towards. So the mission objectives for this unit are the wagons. AI closest to a unit closest to a mission objective. So I'm going to say the unit closest to the mission objective is this unit because it's the only visible unit. All the others are hidden. And this is one I could be doing wrong, but that's what I'm going to I'm going to go with that. So this unit is closest to this unit which is closest to the mission objectives. So it's going to move toward. So this unit is going to move toward this unit. So we're going to go 1 two, three, which is going to stick it right there. Yikes. Um, so that was one action point for that tank unit. Let's see if he is spent. Aha, lucky me. He is spent, so hopefully that will keep him from getting shot up and killed. All right. What am I doing now as a German player? This unit is going to move forward here. So that is one action point for the movement. Let's see if he is spent and he is not. And the Soviet player, <laughs> of course, I just flipped the blue card so they get to uh, pound on me. So we have a close range. Uh, so let's see here. Close range, if unhit, move into close combat. So both of these are unhit and in close range. This unit cannot move into a building. So the tanks won't move into the, these buildings. So he is not going to be the one to activate. This one will, however, move in. And that means he's going to move into close combat, but he's going to move on to those mines, which maybe will do some damage to him. Hopefully we'll do some damage to him. So we got to roll to see if he uh, sets off the mines. On an eight or better, those mines will be set off. Uh, nope, I only rolled a six, so the mines didn't go bang. Um, he's already spent, so I don't need to check that. Uh, let's see, it's my turn to activate. If I fire into that unit, I'm going to hit my own wagon. But... I'm gonna fire smoke in there. There's already one smoke marker there, but when it dissipates, it's gonna reduce some visibility. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire. So that was two APs, and he is not spent. All right, the Soviet player again. Uh, there are no unspent units. It's not a blue card, so the AI is just going to pass. Um. This pioneer unit is going to move here. 
and that is one, two, three, because he's moving into his rear. So it's one for his base movement, two because he moved into his rear flank, and three because he moved into the building. So see if he has spent, and he is not. Back to the AI. Mm. All right, well, we have close combat. We have this tank is sitting on this wagon here. So that is the fire that is going to happen because this is a blue card. So he starts with five. He gets plus four because he is in close combat. But there are two smoke markers in this unit, so it's going to be a minus four. So, or not a minus four. It's plus four to the defense value. So the, the wagon has an 11 defensive value versus the uh, nine attack or plus nine attack. So we're gonna roll this. So we've got an 11 plus nine is uh, 18 versus the 15 on the wagon, which means he didn't kill it outright, but it is damaged. And that wagon is immobilized, which means it's going to sit there for the whole rest of the game, which kind of sucks. Um, and that is the AI's turn. This unit is going to fire smoke on that space there. Again, there's already smoke there, but this turn's about over. I want to make sure I've got some smoke still available. Next turn, see if he is spent or not. And he is spent. So I've only got one unit still active. Uh, and we'll see what the Russian player is going to do. Another command card. Uh, we got closest range here, so he is going to fire. So he's going to be, let's see, this is immobilized. So it's going to be against his flank, which is 12 now because of that token. Uh, I hope I'm picking the right. I mean, it makes sense that I use the vehicles for that, right? Because it is a vehicle. Yeah, we'll see. I'm sure somebody will correct me if I did that wrong. Anyway, the wagon has a defense now of uh, starts with 11 plus one because of the damage token and then plus four for the smoke that it's in. So I've got um, 16 for my defense, or plus nine for the attack. So I got a six plus nine is 15, so I did not hit the wagon. And it is the German player's turn. Do I have a chance of taking that thing out? I'm going to move this token into this space. He's going to lose his hidden status. And that was one action point. So let's see if he is spent. I sure hope not. And he is not spent. It's the Russian players. And another command card. So he's going to fire again. But this time he's got two units to fire at. So he's nine plus nine again against the uh, 16 of the wagon. We'll do that one first. So didn't do enough damage. Nine plus five is 14. Now he's got a fire against this pioneer unit who has a defense of 12 plus four for the smoke. So a 16 and he has still a nine. And he missed again. Thankfully. 
So again, don't have to check to see if he's spent. The German player, this Pioneer unit, is going to fire on that tank. So he has an attack value of 3, plus 4 because it's in close combat. Uh, so that gives me a 7. I have 1 AP left. I'm going to use that. It gives me an 8. And he has a flank value of 15. So it's not great here, but I have a chance. So 8 plus 8 is 16. I did manage to roll enough to damage that vehicle. Let's see if I... Oh, I guess I'm not going to look at it. All right, the got to see if I'm spent. That was two action points, and I am not spent. The Russian player. Uh, we're gonna reshuffle the deck after this action, but it's a green card, so the AI is going to pass. And I think I'm going to attempt to attack it again. I won't have that plus one from the AP, but still having a seven against a 15 is an awful likelihood. So we're gonna do that. That pioneer unit is gonna fire again. So I have a seven against the defense value of 15. It does not have a defense value of 15 because the smoke affects it. It is a defense value of 19. So I would not have damaged that. <sighs> All right. So I have a 7 against a 19, which means I need a 12. Which, there's almost no chance, but I'm going to try it anyway. An 11? So, so close. Oh. Boo. All right. Well, that's a mess. And let's see if I'm spent. And I am. And now it's the AI's turn. If AI plus units is less than four, it's not. So the AI is going to pass. I have no more active units, so I'm going to pass. And now we get to reset the board. And this is actually gonna So these smoke tokens all get flipped over to the one side because it's dissipated a little bit. stack here All right, so that is the end of the turn. I'm gonna reset my caps. I gotta draw a card here, like that. And that is it, on to turn two. Okay, we're gonna roll for initiative for turn two. I am not gonna spend any caps on the roll. Uh, on the eight or better, I get to take the first activation. And a seven, so that means the Soviet player will activate first. Uh, 
I have to shuffle these in at the end of the turn. have this stack of troops here uh, that is in close combat so this tank is going to fire uh, it'll so we have two smoke markers that are minus one now each so the attack is going to be minus two total uh, the tank has an attack value of 5, so it's going to shoot at this Pioneer unit first. It's going to be 5 plus 4 uh, because it's in close combat, uh, minus 2 for the smoke, so that'll make it a uh, plus 7. And we got a 5. Goal was 12, so they got it. So they're going to do some damage there. So my unit is suppressed. And then the tank is going to shoot at the wagon. It's going to be same thing, plus 7, and its target is 11 this time. So we got a six, which does another damage to the, the wagon. And we're gonna draw to see if the wagon is, maybe it's a miss, but it's probably gonna be destroyed. And it is, so that's two hits on the wagon, which will destroy the wagon. And that gives a victory point to the Soviet player. And it's a blue command order, so there is no need to check to see if that unit is spent. Ah, uh, on to me. So I can attack this unit, but now I'm suppressed, which sucks. So I'm, my firepower is down to one, and I have, I'm in close combat, so it would be plus four. So I would be, total of five minus two because of the smoke and I need a 15 so there's really no chance of that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to rally that unit um, and I'm gonna use this card this command action I get one free action actually I'm not gonna use that I'm just gonna go ahead and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to rally this. It's five action points to rally. I need a seven or better, and I got it thankfully. So he is not suppressed any longer. But we got to check to see if he is spent. And it was five action points to make that check, and he is spent. So back to the. Soviet activation. If AI plus units is less than four, it is not. So we can skip that. Uh, again, we have a close combat here, so we're gonna uh, fire. This tank is gonna fire on this pioneer unit. So again, he is a uh, five plus four for close range, uh, close combat. Um, and then the smoke, uh, there's two things of smoke. So he got a four, uh, which is not gonna do it. He missed by one, so no effect this time. We are gonna have to see if he is spent. So his fire activation cost five, and <laughs> he is not spent. Um, Well, 
but I just really don't know what a good good thing to do right now is. Um, you should be there. I think I'm gonna have this tank hunter unit. It's gonna fire on this tank here. Um, so it starts with a three. It's in close, uh, close range. So it's gonna go to plus three and take it to six. And I'm gonna spend a couple APs on it. So that's gonna bring it to a plus eight. Which means I still need an 11. Uh -huh. That's the worst. I'm not gonna do that. That's not a good enough chance to hit. Um, geez. We're going to try to rally this unit. So they're unnerved. They need a seven. And they pass. So they're no longer unnerved. That's five action points for them. So we're going to try to rally or to see if they're spent. They are not spent. We're going to draw for the Soviets, see what they do. If AI plus units is 10 or less, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we got 9 units. So we're going to move. All wagons move along the road. So this wagon is going to come up here into that unit space. That's not the end. Uh, now we got to see we got close combat fire again. So this tank is again gonna fire on this unit Total is plus seven against the 12 and This time he's gonna have it. So he's got uh, a Total of 17 against the 12 which is more than four. So he's gonna kill this unit outright. So I won't even draw So I lose an action point and then it goes there. Uh, doo -doo. And Soviets don't get points. They only get points for killing the wagon. So, well, let's see what's next. This pioneer unit is going to move here. Let's see if we can stack some fire. He is not hidden anymore. This guy is not hidden anymore either because they're only in one modifiers for smoke, so they're visible. That move was into the open. Let's see. So he is going to have just one AP to make that move. Am I skipping here? Yeah, I need to check to see if that tank is spent. So this will be the spent check. And it costs five AP for him to attack, so he is spent. Now my unit. Moving here, one AP, and he has not spent. Um, Soviets, there is no close combat, but there is close range combat. So this guy is gonna fire on one of these units. Uh, pretty much the same modifiers. They're both in the open. They're both in his front flank. I'm gonna look at the flow chart. So target priority is unhit. 
Both are unhit. The highest firepower, they have the same firepower. Lowest cost of fire, they're the same. And is in the highest DM hex. They both have the same defensive modifier. Right? Plus one, plus one, yep. So we're gonna randomly choose who he's gonna target. Actually, I think he's gonna target this one because he has two enemy units in that hex. So that makes more sense for him to target this unit of this hex. So he's gonna fire into this hex. So on the Pioneer, he has plus eight, but he's gonna suffer for the smoke that he's in and for the smoke that he, the target is in. So he has a minus three modifier. Uh, so uh, total of plus five against the armor of 12 on the Pioneers or defensive of 12. So that's 15, so he is gonna damage them. And they're stunned, which sucks because that means they can't do a group fire. That's what I was trying to set up here. And he's gonna also be attacking this uh, wagon. Again, he's got a plus five, needs an 11. Uh, seven plus five, he gets it, so he's going to damage the wagon as well. And that is lightly damaged, which doesn't have any impact, but does count as a hit, so. Oh, I got to take that back. He spent, so he doesn't do that, which is good for me. So it's going to be this guy is going to attack, and he's in close combat with this, or short range, excuse me, with that guy. So he has an attack value of five. He's got plus three for close combat, or excuse me, plus three for close range, which brings him up to an eight. And he's in a stone building which is a minus two, or plus two to my defensive value. So he's at an eight, and we're at a 15. And he gets an eight, so that's a 16, so he beats my 15 and he does damage to my tank hunter unit. And they're stunned. All right. So now we're gonna see if he has spent those five action points for him to make that attack. And he has spent, well, that's good. All right, so we are going to, we're gonna to try to rally this guy again. He's gonna get killed if he doesn't rally. So we need a seven or better for him to rally. I'm going to spend one AP on that. So he needs a six or better and he passes. So he is no longer damaged. It's five APs for him to take that action and he is not spent. So that is good. The Soviets, if AI plus units is 10 or less, then we're going to move two on the turn track. So it is 10 or less. So we're going to place this wagon right here and then move all wagons along the road. So we're going to one, two, and then we're going to move it a second time and it's going to go one, two. Oh, there's a wagon here too. So one wagon's there. This wagon first is going to move there. It's got to roll to see if it sets those mines off. <laughs> and it does. So uh, it's going to take a 15 damage attack from those mines, which will destroy the wagon. But it also moves the mines. So it's another wagon lost. Another point for the 
Soviets. And I hmm, think I'm pretty much done at this point. I've got one wagon on the board, and I don't think he's got much chance. I can kill some of these tanks, but as you can see, they're very, very difficult to, to kill. So anyway, that was the movement for the mission track. Um, no unspent units that are in close combat or short range. If fresh eye is less than fresh units, the AI will pass. So there's one fresh AI and I have four fresh units. So the AI is going to pass. I'm kind of tempted to do a group move here. If I move into this square, that really leaves me open. If he gets a command action card, he can blow the crap out of me. But I would have on a following activation. If I do a group fire, then I'd be in close combat. So this would be three, four for the, the bonus from that. And then another four for being in close combat. So that would be plus eight. But he's in the smoke, which smoke affects close combat. So I would only be a plus six. But that means I would hit him on a nine. Yeah, we're going to try that. So we're going to do a group move into this hex. That Pioneer unit and this Pioneer unit are both moving in. And we're going to hope that I don't get a... Uh, face them that way. Hope that I don't get a command card for them. So, see if we're spent. It's a two or better. I'm not sure if group activation costs extra APs. I gotta look that up. No, I think you just use the highest activation cost of. So movement was one for both of those. So uh, it they're not spent, thankfully. It's now the AI's turn. This is where I'm really hoping I don't get a command order, which I did get a command order. That sucks. All right, so that tank is gonna fire on these two pioneer units that just came at him which totally makes sense. They're gonna use that opportunity to blast away at these fellers. So probably gonna lose both of these guys, but we'll see. So, we have two smoke markers. So uh, and they're both plus one. We're in close range. So the tank has Five plus four is nine against the unit, and they have 12 for defense, uh, plus two for the smoke, so 14. So nine versus 14. Uh, this will be for the first unit. So six plus nine is 15, so that is gonna damage the first unit. And that unit is pinned. Which means they can't move, but they can still fire. So hopefully I'm not done yet. I guess the second unit, Snake Eyes, which is awesome. That means that they don't suffer any damage. So lucky me, that tank is already spent, so I don't need to check for that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try that uh, group activation to see if I can pile on some damage on this thing. So I have got first unit has attack of three plus four because we're in close combat brings it to a seven. The combined fire, they're going to get a plus one uh, to uh, stack onto that combat. So I'm at plus eight. The two smoke is going to boost his defense. So his defense is going to go up to 17. So I have 18 versus 17. I'm going to spend two caps. Um, so I have eight versus his 17. Um, and then the two caps gives me nine, 10, uh, versus his 17. So I need a seven or better to damage this tank. It'd be great if I got a 12 because then I can destroy it. So I at least did some damage. Let's see if it's something good. Oh, I guess I'm not going to look at it. So the tank is damaged. Stick this under there. 
and we won't see what happens until I draw something or I try to attack it or it uh, activates but so I'm gonna see if I'm spent that was two APs for that attack and I'm still good so I can try that again next turn see if the see what the Soviet player does on their activation good it's not a blue card so this is the only tank that can activate right now. There's nobody for it to be close combat or short range. It's going to execute counter actions, but there are not there are uh, some non-hidden units, so we don't have that to deal with. Um, it's not a mortar or infantry gun, so we don't have that. The AI farthest from the lowest defensive value unit fires. All right, so this is the lowest defensive value unit, and that tank does not have line of sight to it, so it's not gonna fire. The largest group of AIs closest to a mission objective or unit, low risk move towards. So you can have a group of one, so this is the largest group of AI that is closest to this unit, so it's gonna low risk move toward. So for the low risk move, it doesn't wanna move into any fire zones, that it's not already in and it wants to improve its defensive uh, the defensive rating of the or the defensive modifier of the hex that it's in so he's already inside the fire hex of this unit and it only has a range of one um, so I think one and we have some bonus move and another bonus move. I think that is the move that that unit is going to take for its lowest move towards. Puts it closest to that. It didn't get into more fire zones than it was already in. And it is in the same defensive modifier. So I think that is going to be his action. And it was one AP to make that move. So he is not spent. We are going to make another group activation to try to fire at this tank and hopefully destroy it. So we're in the same position. We have start with three plus four because we're in close range plus one for the uh, second unit that's part of the fire. Um, so that gives me an eight and I'm going to use two APs again. So I'm at plus 10 on my attack and then the tank has a defense of 15 but because of the smoke it goes to a 17 so I need a 7 or better I gotta flip this now because it may have some effect and it is suppressed which doesn't do anything to its uh, defensive numbers so it will help me if it's gonna attack me though because it's got reduced stats but so I need a seven or better to damage the tank. And <laughs> I got a seven. All right, so we're gonna see, and it's the second, so we're gonna just flip it. I killed a tank. It's so hard to do. Hopefully I did it right. But, uh, so that is a dead tank for me. I'm gonna earn a victory point for that. Put these back in the bag. And I feel like I've accomplished something. Even if I lose the battle, I killed a tank. So at least there's that. All right. So we got to roll to see or check to see if they're spent. That costs two AP. And they are not spent. Um, we'll check for the Soviet players. See what they got going on. If AI plus units is 10 or less, it is. So we're gonna tick that there. This wagon is gonna move two spaces. So it parks itself there as it's traveling down the road. Uh, there is no close combat. There is no short range combat for an unspent unit. That's the only one that's unspent. Uh, AI mortar or infantry gun, there's not. AI furthest from the lowest defensive value unit. Again, that's the lowest defensive value unit. 
but he does not have line of sight, so he is not going to fire at it. The AI closest to a target does a move towards. So we will have that. This tank is going to move towards. It's going to move there. It's not going to get any bonus movement because it just moved into smoke, which I'm lying. That smoke plus one does not affect bonus movement, so it could move forward another space. However, I gotta look at bonus movement because I'm not sure if you will move into a space with the enemy or if that will stop you. I know that sometimes they'll move into close combat. So it does say they can move into and through hexes with other units in them. So I think AI closest to a target. I think this is the target. So it is going to move into that hex. So I think that's right. We're going to do that. And that is one action point for him to do that. So we'll see. He is not spent. Uh, and now it's my turn. I think I'm going to have to do a group activation and fire on him. Uh, I don't have any APs left to boost my fire, but that's OK. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to need a 9 to have a successful hit on him. And I got an eight, which does not give me a successful hit. See if my unit is spent, and it is not. Um, so we're gonna activate the AI again. We're gonna move the turn tracker one. And that's going to move this wagon on down the road. We are in close combat, so that unit is going to fire. So he has a 15, or excuse me, a 5 plus 4 for being in close combat. And our defense on both units is. Uh, 12 because it's flank which is the same so so he has a 15 and there's two smoke markers so my defense is 14 so the damaged unit we're gonna roll that one first so a 9 versus my 14 and he beat it and it's gonna gonna do some damage to me so that will kill my unit so it's two hits on him. And then he's going to fire on the other unit. Same thing, his nine versus my 14. And seven plus nine is going to hit me. So I'm going to draw to see what he did. And my unit is now cowering. Another dead unit on my side. Um, all right, we're going to check to see if that tank is spent. Cost five action points, and he is spent now. And it's back to my turn. Let me. So I'm going to move this tank hunter unit here. That is one AP. I'm going to try to stack them so they can do that combined fire again. And he is not spent. We're going to activate the AI. And it's a green card. All the AI units are spent, so they are not going to have any activation. So they will pass. So I do not need to enter into that hex to do a combined fire because I can do it from here. 
So we're gonna do a group fire on this. Um, it's gonna cost me a little bit more to do my fire because of the cowering, but it's I think it's worth it. Uh, it doesn't affect my firepower ability. So it's gonna cost four APs to successfully attack here, uh, but I have the same amount of fire. So I have, start with three plus four because it's cl close combat goes to seven. This unit is gonna assist me, which brings it to a nine. Excuse me, brings it to an eight. And they have a defense of 17. So my eight versus their 17. And six plus eight is not 17, but that's okay. We're gonna check to see if we're spent. And one plus, we are spent. So both of those units are spent. Mm. And so it's the AI's turn. Let's see what they've got. That's unfortunate for me. So they have a command order. They're gonna have this close combat fire they're gonna make. So we've got uh, five versus my, yeah. The damage actually boosted my defense a little bit. So my defense is 12, 13, 14, 15 for the smoke. His attack is uh, nine. So nine versus my 15 defense. And he gets a 17, so he is going to do some damage to me, and I'm already damaged, so unless this is a miss, he's going to kill me. And he kills my unit. And he's already spent, so I don't need to worry about that. I think I'm going to go ahead and call it here, because I don't believe... I can pull out a win. These tanks are just very, very tough to, to destroy. Uh, it's kind of an interesting scenario, but it's uh, also a very challenging one. So haven't figured out the right way to, to win this combat. Hopefully I got most of the rules right, most of the uh, activation orders correct. I got some of those wrong in my first game, so hopefully I did a little bit better job uh, on this one of getting that right. but. Uh, it's a fun scenario, very challenging scenario. Maybe I need to use some of the make it easier cards. Um, the grenade, I'm not sure. I, I start with this grenade card. It's supposed to, uh, I guess, be something I can use against the tanks, but it doesn't get the close combat modifiers when it attacks. So when I'm in close combat, any of my units gets a plus four to their attack value. Well everybody's attack value when you add four to it is going to be better. So I'm not sure why those grenades are that useful. Um, but I, I must be missing something on them. So hopefully somebody can tell me uh, a little bit of how the grenades work and why they're awesome. I mean, they are a free attack because I don't have to spend any points for them, which is, is nice. But when you have a base of four, well, when you're going against a 15 flank value, Good luck, because you need an 11 to, to do any damage with that. But maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. Anyway, it was a good game. Going to have to try some different tactics, different ways on this to see what works. Uh, what I've tried so far hasn't worked, so uh, maybe somebody has some advice for me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this and the other projects that I work on, you can subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, comments, saw any rules that I got wrong, or have some advice on some tactics, you can put those in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.